Hi, you're watching Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. With me is Sharad Kutin. What is being done to ensure that there will be minimal impact of any lockdown to stakeholders within the ecosystem of the vaccination process? I mean, this includes the essential medical device manufacturing industry and others in the supply chain. Let's speak now to Andy Lee. He's the chairman of the Association of Malaysian Medical Industries. He's also Johnson Johnson's Government Affairs Director for Malaysia and Singapore. Andy, good evening. Thank you for joining us on the show. Now, there seems to be many moving parts to the medical device supply chain. I mean, everything from disposables to surgical instruments to therapeutics to diagnostic equipment. I'm wondering just how well insulated this industry is to the risk of manufacturing disruption. I mean, what are the consequences, you would say, uh, of disruption to operations within this industry? Hi, hi, Melissa. Uh, thank you for, for having me on, on this show. So uh, I've been introduced as the chairman of uh, AMMI. We are the Medical Device um, Association for Malaysia. Um, just, just to give you a bit of uh, understanding of how big the medical device industry in Malaysia is, is really we are a high growth healthcare subsector um, and we are really expected to re-energize the Malaysian economy landscape, right? Um, with production of high complexity, high technology and high value added products, right? But Malaysia today, um, we comprise about 200 over manufacturers, right? Producing broad range like what I mentioned, you know, from the disposable, the surgical gloves, opticals, and, and of course it goes into very, very complex uh, surgical instruments, implants, uh, clinical devices, and of course, um, healthcare equipments, diagnostics, right, which, which has electronic modules in it, right? So when you look at the, the spectrum of um, how MCO or how the COVID pandemic has actually impacted the whole sector, um, yeah. if you put in in perspective, like Malaysia is the biggest exporter for catheters, right? Um, not many people know that. Uh, it's about 80% supply to the world market of catheters, right? We know about rubber gloves, but the, the bigger chunk of, of that medical device um, consumables, we are big, right? But we have also got very high range, high tech uh, medical devices manufacturers here in Malaysia. Now, when, when the pandemic hit, and the lockdown hit us in March last year. Obviously, we were learning from, from ground zero. What can we do? The government is, is closing borders. Uh, every country around the world is closing borders, right? Uh, we see today containers are uh, a problem, right? Shipping is a problem, but slowly we have, we have gone through that, that process over a year, right? But every time when there is a lockdown, uh, we always communicate with the government and, and METI has been very, very helpful for, for us in this sector. They've been very transparent. They've been listening to us. Uh, what are the pain points that we are facing? Um, not just at so the Andy, manufacturing side. Sorry, if I can... In right? Right. So if I can uh, interrupt, just as a... So considering how strategic it is both to the... Um, uh, man management of the pandemic locally and globally, perhaps regionally, uh, and to the local economy, do you expect yep. that in any plan for a lockdown, uh, full, half, whatever the measure might be, that there'll be a carve-out for the medical uh, industries, that they will not have a problem in terms of continuing production? Right. So in that point, we are always seen as what we call a critical essential sector, right? Uh, today, we've got hundreds of hundreds of hospitals in Malaysia. Uh, they need to operate. They need to continue to serve Malaysians. And, you know, your medical devices in there has, someone has to deliver and someone has to go through the whole supply chain. Now, when we look through the, the issues of uh, manufacturing site itself, right? It's self-contained. You have got uh, sites with 300, 600, 1,000 employees, and they are in a very high, what I call, sanitized area. All right. I'm speaking about the, the real surgical um, equipment, surgical uh, uh, catheters, you know, manufacturing of those equipments, right? They are, and the, the lockdown 
and when we spoke to the ministry and the government, they do understand, right? There are some restrictions, and of course, uh, at the start of the pandemic, all the SOPs has already put in place. Could right? I, could I just uh, get you to elaborate on that? Because we, as we know, factories and manufacturing hubs, they are uh, they contribute one of the highest um, uh, you know, number of cases and clusters. How do how can we avoid that, particularly if you're talking about, you know, essential services like uh, medical device manufacturing? How do we think about that, making sure that they don't contribute to more COVID cases? Yeah, so so it's it's a tricky question to answer because it's the the manufacturing sites are not self-contained, right? The workers go home. The, there is a social life of the, the employees, but what we have always made sure right at the industry level is adherence to strict SOPs. When you enter the site, um, strict checks on temperature, social distancing, um, barriers are put in place when you have meals. Um, even having said that, there will be uh, one or two incidents right when patients or rather employees are contracted with uh, COVID-19 in the in their household or, or in the community areas, right? And and that's yeah, yeah. where so, we try to stop. Yeah, I, Andy, I just want to ask you because it, you know, uh, Kairi Jamalud and Musti Minister uh, suggested that with with some of the facilities for bottling vaccines, they might actually be rolling out the vaccinations for the workers yes. in those. Yes. Uh, and I know that uh, you know AMMI has already called for prioritization of stakeholders within the, the ecosystem for vaccination. What response have you got from that call? We have been involved in some discussions with the Ministry of uh, International Trade. Um, they are putting together a pilot program for industry vaccination. Um, there is some sort of um, what we call uh, priority in, in very strategic manufacturing uh, sectors. Right. As you can see, um, Pharma and AI is one, right? We, we are happy to see that rolling out. We are also very cognizant about the supply of vaccine coming into the country, right? Uh, repeatedly, uh, YB Karim Jamaluddin has mentioned many times that the supply is coming in, right? Um, in weeks, um, in, in the coming weeks, we have also seen millions of supply is, is planned. And today, um, in the news, AstraZeneca's vaccine is, is has arrived. Half about six hundred thousand. Any, any update American. on the government stand on the single dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine? Um, well, YB Kari has to has answered that question, um, and is is something which um, we we cannot deliver to fit into the national vaccination program. So so in in that in a sense, um, in fact today the supply of vaccine in Malaysia is ample, right? It's, mm. it's all about delivery schedules, right? Every country around the world is facing the same problem, right? Um, so I'm very pleased to also see the, the number of doses are coming. Uh, even like yesterday, the, the vaccination has ramped up to about 81,000 uh, being administered and is due to go up higher, right? So with this opportunity, we, we see a, a few prong of, um, approach, right? One is we have really encouraged our member companies, employees, right? Take opportunity when AstraZeneca is rolled out. First come, first serve. They are going to Penang. It's one of the big hubs for medical devices. Johor is also one. Klang Valley has already started, right? So as more, more vaccine, um, after right. the allocation of 60 and above, you know, it's open to all. You know, that 1.1 right. million doses are are sufficient. So encouraging the workforce to, to get vaccinated as soon as possible. Uh, uh, Andy, thank you so much for joining us on the show tonight. Appreciate your insights and your time. Thank you. We're going no to take problem. a quick break here on Consider This, but more in just a couple of minutes. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.